Welcome to the Startup of the Year podcast, where each episode we showcase exciting new companies from around the world. This podcast is produced by Established, creators of the Startup of the Year program. Established is focused on helping organizations with their innovation, startup, and communication strategies. Thank you to our sponsor, Silicon Valley Bank. Hello, everybody. This is Frank Gruber, and welcome to the Start of the Year podcast. This is episode one, and we're looking to spotlight some of the most interesting early stage startups from around the world. Today, I'm joined by a great group, our co hosts today from the established and Startup of the Year team. We've got Jen Consalvo, we've got Lori Teal, and we've got Rich Malloy. Welcome, gang. How's everybody doing today? Awesome. How are you doing? Doing okay. Doing okay, naturally. Um, so anybody have any, any quick <laughs> quick stories they want to kick things off with? Um, <laughs> I just flew across the country and I'm excited to be back. <laughs> that's that's pretty impressive. Um, your arms must be tired. They are. Uh, yes. Welcome back. Dad jokes. Winning, winning with dad jokes, Frank. <laughs> I got to go. All, if I'm going to go in, I'm going to go all in, right? Mm. Go, go start, with, start off strong. Uh, yep. So yeah. So since this is our first episode, I wanted to kick things off by kind of going around the horn and um, get a little bit, bit of background of our co-hosts and where you're located and maybe a little bit more about what you're up to. And if you want to share maybe a superpower about, you know, when it comes to startup plan, what your superpower might be, that might be helpful for the rest of the audience listening and ready around the horn, ready, go. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll jump in. This is Rich Malloy. Hey, I'm in Boulder, Colorado, and I've been a part of the uh, Colorado startup community since 2011. Before that, I was in New York City. And let's see here. I manage, uh, I'm the engagement director for Established. And so I manage the corporate startup engagement side of, of the work that we do. You know, and if uh, I had to say a superpower, I think that my brain is wired for network and and wired for personal networking and building create building connections creating connections um, and leveraging those connections for other people and so whenever I, fi- I find that whenever I'm talking to an investor or a startup or a community person that I'm always thinking about oh who can I connect them to and what and oh they should meet this person they should talk to that person and so that's just something that I love to do and I feel like I'm um, my brain is just wired to make those connections awesome you're a super connector. Working on it. Working on it. All right. Thanks, Rich. All right. Next up, who wants to go? Jen or Lori? Jump on in. I'll go. Go for it. I'll go. It's Lori Teal. I'm in Santa Barbara, California. Uh, Came here for school to go to UCSB and became a part of a startup that was one of the first acquisitions for AOL. So not to, to, to still sound relevant, but, um, was a huge experience to be a part of that and to then grow um, 10 years into the making of, of understanding how innovation um, can be brought to the consumer. And now I'm fortunate enough to be the director of programs at Established and spend most of the year managing the Startup of the Year program and connecting with startups and learning their stories and seeing how we can help and support them. And um, Superpower was a hard question, I have to say, but... Um, it kept coming back to curiosity for me. I remember hearing a lot of influencers in my life saying, if you stop being curious and you're going to miss out on so much, so stay curious. So I'm very curious about startups, their, the innovation that they're involved in, their stories, what motivates them, and just how to know how I can support any way I can. I'd say your superpower is caring, but Aww. I also like curiosity. You're, you give a warm heart for, for people and, and things. So. I don't know if you realize that or not, but that's what I would say. Um, there's no, there's no right answer. No answer. No right answer here. Jen, give us a little bit of background coming back from the uh, East Coast today. Sure, what you, sure. What have you been up to? <laughs> so, so I'm a transplant. I, uh, I'm from the East Coast, from the Northeast, up in Maine, but spent 20 years in the Washington D.C. metro area. Moved out here to Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, gosh, about six, seven years ago. Um, but really love to, uh, to bounce back and forth and, and spend a lot of time back in DC as well. So let's see. Um, I spent, let's see, tw- about 20 years of working in tech, uh, between big companies and, and, uh, building a startup that really supported, um, supported other startups in a big way. And now we've evolved this into 
established and start up of the year. And I think my superpower is is probably being able to look at somebody, a, a founder, somebody who's part of a startup and to see what their greatest potential is. You know, oftentimes I hear someone's story and they don't even realize maybe what they're onto or how big what they're doing could be. And so I love helping them realize that, you know, what they're doing, you know, maybe it is amazing, but maybe it could even, you know, grow into something bigger than they ever imagined. And and that's what I, I get excited about that. All right. Thanks, Jen. I, I just like to say one thing that I think Jen always sees the potential in everybody and helps us um, with that all the time. And that is definitely a superpower for sure. Great. Thanks. All right. So this is Frank, <laughs> Frank Gruber. And my background is uh, I was in the tech space for a long time as well, working at big companies, started a company called Tech Cocktail because we wanted to better connect the local communities and amplify what was going on. That turned into a media company called Techco, which we um, had acquired the, the media portion in January. And now here we are with Established, where we're continuing on with um, some of our work around the innovation space, uh, as well as helping others with it as and, and doing our own program, the Startup of the Year program, which um, I'm really excited about as it, we've got unlimited potential to grow that now. And um, I'm excited with the team here that the things that we've got cooking. So um, my superpower is, um, I'd say <laughs> it's similar to, to riches, and it, but it's based off of relationships, right? So everything's relationship based. And so continuing to build and foster relationships is super important. And I think realizing that and, um, and connecting with people um, around the country over the last decade or so has um, really um, made that uh, really stand out in that, you know, a lot of these folks that started with an idea are now, you know, billion dollar startup founders. And um, I'm excited to be able to help, you know, the ones that are just getting going, uh, you know, find their way. So I think, I don't know if that's uh, the most concise way to say it, but it's, it's a little bit of connecting, a little bit of relationships and uh, fostering. And so with that, let's get started. Um, it's not about just about us. It's about five startups that we <laughs> caught our attention as part of our startup of the year program here. and. We basically wanted to share a little bit of, uh, about them, some insights and updates. And uh, if you're interested uh, in, in learning more, you can obviously reach out to us and we can connect you or uh, maybe there's a way that you can help these companies or get involved in some way. So um, let's get started. But before we do, actually, let's learn a little bit more. If you aren't just jumping in here and you don't know what the Startup of the Year program is, I think we should give you just a broad level of version of what that means. Um, and so Lori, do you want to, you're the program lead. Do you want to take it away with a little bit about what we're doing with the start of the year? Absolutely. Um, so the start of the year takes place over an 11, 11 month period and culminates at an annual event that we host each fall. We've been doing this. Um, if you look back all the way back to 2006 in some way, shape or form, we have always been highlighting and looking at startups and it's just evolved and to now a, a, a beautiful event. So the 2019 application is now open. We've already started to receive applications from around the globe, from Paris to Texas to all kinds of cool sites. Um, we're looking for startups who are fewer than six years old, have a viable product to showcase, and have raised less than $5 million in total funding. The applications are vetted by both our internal established team and by the community, our community of tech leaders, investors, and influencers. And by summertime, we get to announce our top 100. To find out more, you can go to www.startupofyear.com. Let me say that again. You can go to www.startupofyear.com and find out a lot more. And we hope that you will. All right, great. Thank you, Lori. Anybody else want to jump in with anything around the Startup of the Year program? You know, I think uh, an important thing to know is that it's more than just a competition. Absolutely. So, you know, as Frank mentioned, we've been doing this, and Lori, we've been doing this for a long, long time. And a lot of the companies that we've been able to, you know, make connections for or help in some way or introduce them to something that, that was completely new to them, they were not necessarily the winner of a competition. Um, they just became part of the community. And so, you know, even if you're, you know, you're shy, you're thinking, ah, I'm, I don't know if I could win the start of the year, um, you know, just check it out, sign up, apply, become part of the community because you never know what you can discover and learn and, and what that could lead to. Absolutely. And, and, and to just put a little 
part of that is, um, I mean, I think every startup has always come back with, wow, just that one meeting with a mentor or just the networking with the other startups and already starting to see where it could create synergy. I mean, just all of those connections and networking alone has been extremely valuable to the startups over the years. Totally agree. Are we ready to get started? Now we're ready. Okay. So what we're going to do is each co-host is going to take uh, a company, one of the top five from our last year's or this past year's startup of the year competition, and we're going to kind of go through, everyone's going to kind of weigh in with some thoughts about the company, and we can kind of share anything else we've learned recently, and then we move on. So I'm going to kick it off uh, with our startup of the year from this past uh, 11-month process. Uh, it was a periomics, and they're out of yeah. Ashburn. Our winner, yeah. yeah, let's hear it for Periomics, right? Uh, they're out of Ashburn, Virginia, and it was co-founded by Crystal Eisenhower. And what a Periomics is all about is they're the only company that's identifying every bacteria, virus, parasite, and fungus in one simple test. Um, you know, it's really trying to help people figure out what's, you know, if you've got a health condition, you can't figure it out. It could be a bacteria, it could be a virus. Um, in the past, it was there's multiple different types of tests, and they've now figured out, you know, the precise... Uh, pathogen testing um, along that kind of same lines with just one simple test. So um, they're currently raising funding. Uh, they're raising their their, their Series A. Um, they're they've had a lot of really great successes over the last year. Um, and you know, obviously, being named Startup of the Year was one of them uh, in October. And then earlier in October, um, they actually won a DC based uh, vignette uh, project or they or vignetta projects. <laughs> And uh, I think they won like twenty thousand dollars with that, which um, you know obviously continued to put them in the spotlight in that in that community, and then obviously also in in New York, uh, where that that project was born. Um, they have been, you know, they they basically announced they got an award from the National Science Foundation uh, around t in September as well. So they had a big fall, right? They had a lot going on. Um, they've received. Uh, more than 1.6 million dollars from the National Science Foundation, so they've got some support um, for through through grants and things like that. But they're now going the more conventional route with a Series A to really grow, and they've got a lead in the market right now because of the fact that they're the only one that is doing this. And they want to maintain that. So, you know, they've done. They're pretty scrappy. <laughs> you know, the they they've been able to do this all with a, a very limited um, budget and. Uh, have been generating revenue. So I think, you know, I'm excited about this company. Um, wanted to kind of have the rest of the team weigh in on some of the things that they've experienced in working with uh, Crystal and, and and the rest of our team. I was going to say, um, I've been talking to Crystal. There's a, you know, such a long period while we're talking to startups before we actually get to the program. And just um, so impressed by her background. Um, she brings a lot of power to to a periomics, um, uh, you know, as a doctor, and also just um, her background um, with um, starting other companies and leading other companies. So, um, one of the one of the also one of the founders where all the other startups came up and just rallied around her, and were you could tell like everyone just was so happy to have seen her success of of the startups that were you know, right there around her. And um, she just made a, a huge impression, I think, on everybody, including the startup community there. And it was beautiful to see. And I think out of the gate, her first question was, um, which is going to be everyone's question is, well, what do you say about Theranos? And um, she handled it very well. She continues to say it's frustrating, but it, it extremely helpful for her to, to keep breaking down the wall that that's not who they are and to hopefully stop having that question be asked for her one day. <laughs> you know, there was a, yeah. there was a funny moment up on stage when she was in the, in the finals pitching at, at startup of the year at innovate celebrate. And she's, she gets asked that question, right? Because every, yep. because everybody asks it because it's on everybody's mind. And let's face it. As soon as Frank read the description, yep. your mind immediately went to Theranos, no matter who you are or where you are. Right. And so, she starts to answer. So she gets asked the question on stage and she starts to answer and she says, you know, and, and then she stops and she looks down and she goes, darn it. She says, I have a rule and I broke my rule. And my rule is I never wear a black turtleneck when I'm pitching. <laughs> and she was wearing a black turtleneck. And so uh, everybody got a good laugh out of that. And then she went on to answer the question. And so it was actually, I think even better that she had the black, black turtleneck on caught herself that she had broken broke her rule and everybody got a good laugh out of it 
Agreed. Yeah. And I think she, um, she really drills home to everyone that this is grounded in real science and what they're doing, they're already out in the market. They're already helping people. They're already, you know, bringing in revenue. Um, and they're making a real difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, it's been incredible to watch what she's done. As Frank said, being very scrappy, what they've been able to achieve with very little money has been extremely impressive. And I think that's such a great, uh, great quality for a founder. She's she just seems very um, just very driven, but very responsible and and focused on building building something amazing. Yeah, I think right. everyone gasped 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 when she said um, really little to no money on marketing. <laughs> Right. She has yeah. Spent, yeah, no, she hasn't spent a lot of, of money on marketing, and you know the, the the thing she's tackling is pretty amazing. Um, up to eighty percent of infections are actually never uh, diagnosed mm -hmm. uh, before they prescribe some kind of drug or treatment, which is um, pretty scary. <laughs> so uh, that's you know part of the reason that a lot of infections are becoming resistant to drugs, and, um, and there's just a lot of people that are, have chronic infections because of it. So more or less, uh, I think this could be, really help a lot of people. Uh, and she is out currently raising her Series A. Uh, I'm excited for her and obviously want to see her be successful. Um, anything else anyone wants to add? Go, Crystal. Go, <laughs> Crystal. I think she's at the forefront of this whole personal, personalized medicine movement. And um, and there are a lot of places for her company to continue to to have impact. So I, I just really excited about their future. No, most definitely. Great. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Next up, we've got Park and Diamond. Lori, you ready? Sure. So Park and Diamond is founded by uh, Jordan Klein and David Hall. Specifically, uh, one of the founders, David Hall, was um, at Virginia Tech when his sister was hit by a or was on a bicycle and hit by a car at the corner of Park and Diamond, and um, she wasn't wearing a helmet. So he wanted to figure out how to how to go over that hurdle and um, have more people protecting their heads and not having to um, endure the healthcare that his sister um, had to go through. And so they've gone on and been inspired by his sister's story to um, be able to improve the cycling and safety, not only with a really cool and stylish helmet, but also improving the actual technology of the helmet and um, making it and, and, and wanting to improve the metrics of how many people do not wear helmets. So it's just the numbers are astronomical of how many human beings are just still not wearing a, a bike helmet. So um, they're doing an incredible job with, with um, moving that movement forward and just had a huge um, uh, kick, I'm sorry, Indiegogo fundraiser and did amazing. And they are moving forward with uh, wins from different competitions like Red Bull and uh just closed around funding with BMW Mini, and um, they are about ready to watch production. And it's pretty impressive for two young students who are already taking on so much to just really change the world of um, safety and 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 um, helmet technology. Most definitely, yeah. So I love this team. I think they they came last year, not this year, but last year as well. And they've you know when they were still college students, and so now they're out and they've they're continuing to evolve the product, and it's it's come to market now, and it's pretty amazing what they've done. And I I think you know, there's a lot of potential, especially in the fact that now there's such a push for like scooters in every city, but those scooters aren't giving away helmets. So um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for Park and Diamond. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, one exciting moment or really interesting moment from the competition was when, so our, our we had this fabulous judge, a lot of you probably know, uh, Miss Arlen Hamilton. And uh, Arlen asked them, you know, hey, one of your, one of the things you're trying to do is to get everyone to use this helmet, um, which looks like a little hat and there's, you know, interesting styles, but what are you doing to really get some, make sure you understand the total potential of your market and different hairstyles and different hair types and, and, you know, aesthetic differences. And, you know, I think they were, they were pretty, had a pretty good response to that working with a lot of different designers and interviewing a lot of different folks. And we're very open to all the potential out there for working with, you know, men and women, all different, uh, you know, types of hair and, it was uh, it was exciting to hear from them that they were these are the things that they're actually thinking about and for two young guys uh, you know really pushing themselves 
to understand what their market is, uh, they were they handled it quite well. Absolutely. I, one other footnote would just be that um, the Virginia Tech professor um, who has an innovation class of some sort, I don't have the ex- actual class name, but David was in that class and between you know, his personal story and what he wanted to do innovation wise, his professor was the one who encouraged him to apply the first time at start of the year. And then it just was incredible to see them come back and how much momentum they had already brought. So listen to your professors because <laughs> they might know something too. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I think it's just really um, interesting. I, I tried the helmet on on stage. I forgot to mention that earlier. It's an interesting um, helmet in that it doesn't look like, um, it doesn't look like you're wearing a helmet. It looks like a hat. It looks like a hat, and I love hats. So I think there's, like, like you mentioned, Jen and uh, Laura, there, there's a lot that can be done there, especially on the design side. And they've done um, already come so far with that. So um, it's really cool. It folds up the size of like a, a water bottle and can go in your pocket, which is great for you know if you're you're commuting around. So any yeah. everyone should wear a helmet. Safety Frank says that. So I think this is a, this is definitely really interesting <laughs> to me, and I'm obviously going to continue to watch them as they continue to grow. Should definitely go check out their site. I mean, they've got great, uh, they've got great video and and um, product shots of how you can wear it backwards, forwards, anywhere, and hopefully on a snowboard one day. <laughs> All right. So next up, we've got Weather Check. So Weather Check is folk is a. Uh, an address specific monitoring application for weather damage. And so this is somebody for that, uh, for companies that have big real estate portfolios and that have, uh, uh, properties all over the place and it will let the property owners know by address, whether there has been damage to their properties from weather. And so somehow they figured out how to take, uh, weather data and other information and put it all together to be able to provide real-time actionable reports on damage for uh for properties and the whatever their secret sauce is you know they're monitoring 24 7 365 does not require any device or install or anything along those lines right so it's so it's absolutely fascinating there was and i remember at the startup of the year finals that there was a lot of debate about the how they do this and how does this happen and how does this work and in and, and uh there's there's a great saying that i've heard from um from in, from investors and there's the companies that we all agree on and the companies that we that uh or the companies we all agree are great investment the companies we all agree are bad investment and then there's the ones that we disagree on and we make all of our money on the ones we disagree on and you know, and so I think there's there's a lot of interesting things going on with WeatherCheck of their how they're going about gathering the information, putting the data together, and then providing that real time actionable report for a property owner that has property spread all over the place. Yeah, that's a great way to great way to sum it up there. And I think it is a kind of a black box for all of us because we're not in that space. And I think there's an insurance play obviously there, and um, we're not in that space. So. Um, you know, those are some of the questions that, that, um, you know, he had when he was on stage at start of the year. And so he, he tried to answer them the best he could and obviously ended up doing really well on stage. So, um, they actually won the CES booth at Innovate Celebrate. So they're going to end up at, uh, at CES as well. So, uh, I love the fact they're from Louisville, Louisville, uh, Kentucky. And you're, you know, it's an area where you're not hearing a ton of startups coming out of, but there's, there are hubs there. So obviously we're, we're trying to find companies like his, um, all over the globe. So um, definitely going to continue to watch as, as they check <laughs> the weather. <laughs> and if you're at CES, make sure you go check out weather check Demetrius gray. He's the founder. He'll probably be there. And, um, and he was a great guy. He handled himself so well on stage. I think everyone really loved his personality and, and how he presented Absolutely. himself. Yeah. Yeah, and I just want to give a shout out to 1804, an ecosystem builder in um, Louisville that brought them to our attention. And they obviously did well through the preliminaries, through, I mean, all the way to the top five. So um, definitely want to keep an eye out on weather check. All right. Thanks to the ecosystem. Weather. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I love weather. I was I, I just thought for a second there was all about weather. And, and now, I, you know, 
because I, yeah. I love to check the weather. But anyway, it's not about that. It's not, it's not about me, Frank. It's not about okay. the weather. Yeah. Either. It's, it's, right, right. it's being proactive and making sure that you can actually protect your assets. And yeah. it's pretty important. So. Yep, totally. All right. Next up, let's go to Tivic Health. Jen? Yeah. So Tivic Health, I found fascinating. Uh, so the founder, Jennifer Ernst, um, she's, she's a pro, like seasoned entrepreneur. She's done this before. And to me, she was just a, a powerhouse of a founder, incredible presenter. And sh- her latest product is, uh, is called Tivic Health. She is actually focused on the chronic sinusitis um, uh, uh, industry. So there's, there are, gosh, millions of people who suffer with chronic sinusitis. Um, they use all kinds of drugs and sprays and get sinus surgeries. Um, I think I'm looking for the numbers. It's a pretty staggering number. Um, like one in four to to one in three Americans actually have this issue. Um, And she's actually created a product. It's considered an electroceutical um, that you can just buy over the counter. And it's called clear, clear up unit. It relieves your sinus pain in five minutes, um, just using this neuromodulation technique. So you have relief at home whenever you need it. You don't have to go to the doctor. Um, it's, it holds great promise. Uh, I think, you know, they have some hurdles to cross. I think this year, by the end of this year or early in 2019, they're looking to have FDA clearance. So they do need some level of clearance for this. Um, but you know, they've been named the most promising startup by neurotech reports. Um, their, their category, the electric electroceuticals is considered uh, one of the top 10 technologies poised to change the world. And uh, just in general, I think they're very passionate about this industry and about uh, you know the challenge they have. I think the one other thing about Tivic that impressed me is the team that she's pulled together. So Jennifer has found people who, when it comes to, you know, from production to sales and marketing, the people on her team have tons of experience and are just really uh, poised to just kill it. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about Tivic Health. In a good way, Jen. In a good way, not kill it. Like this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a family friendly show. Yes. So what, what was the? So I'll use Gary V's term. Just she's ready to crush it. Crush it. Yes. <laughs> That's better. Uh, so anyway, uh, I call I categorize this one under magic. Uh, because it's something that I didn't know even existed. And now it's magically saving, you know, people, you know, chronic, you know, chronic conditions with their, their sinuses. And uh, what's it called? Clear up unit. It's a clear up unit. So it literally helps clear up your sinuses. That's um, pretty cool. So I'll let you guys all weigh in. I was just going to, well, you know, the bottom line is our bodies have all these electrochemical systems and most, you know, the traditional uh, approach to medicine is is drugs and, and chemicals, right? Approaching it from the chemical side, which is a trillion dollar industry. Um, but this this approaches it from a, a completely different way. Lori? Yeah, that was one thing I was going to say. And then uh, just to give a little more on uh, a little more about Jennifer is um, because I'm with these startups for quite a while <laughs> again. Um, but that's my favorite part is to get to know them. Um, as soon as we announced the top five, we had taken the top five back at um, start of the year and immediately Jennifer's already um, uh, like business, like letting people know what just happened, still making deals over on the side of like, or not making deals, but like making sure she's on it for whatever the next thing. I mean, she was just, she was just like in the zone there she's all in all in beyond and um very impressive to just see her determination to make this happen so yeah i wouldn't be surprised if in 2019 people really start seeing it uh you know out in the marketplace i think they're going to move pretty quickly and we shared actually from startup of the year from the from the conference that um it actually has they weren't planning to come to ces uh in january but um through all the connections they made and, and, and all of the networking, it they um, found that it would make sense for them and they're going to be there. And oh, um, so if you're at CES, go check out Tivic Health. And um, they were really happy about just all of those networking and outcomes that came out of what they didn't expect, but were pleasantly surprised um, with um, with that conference. So That's awesome. Yeah. And they've got, you know, their, their 2019 goals are ship a product, right? And that, that mm-hmm. product is is getting really close. So I think they're, they're getting excited about it. And then the other thing I wanted to mention was that, you know, it's, 
it's this is a, this was did really well at, at start of the year. Uh, prior year, Oscar Wellness had a similar um, electro um, electromagnetic th- or electrotherapy, th- which ended up taking on our start of the year. So I just want to mention that it's interesting that they, a lot of these new technologies are coming out that are um, they sound like magic, uh, but they're obviously doing something to help um, with chronic um, conditions. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So next up, we've got, uh, last but not least, let's talk about ARIO. So ARIO is out of Norfolk, Virginia, and they're, uh, I love their tagline, real, da- real world data in the real world. And so it's an AR, an augmented reality uh, application that you install on your phone and can make a somebody in the service business or in the con, sorry in the the home service business or the construction business uh, or the contracting business can make them an instant expert on whatever it is that they're looking at and so you're able to create tags in in a real world space create virtual tags in a real world space and one of the coolest things about this about this technology and what they've built is that it's not GPS reliant. And so you can be deep inside of a building. You can be, uh, you know, you don't, you don't have to be, you don't have to have a strong GPS signal or a GPS signal at all. It, it works off of, uh, it works off of the, um, the gyroscope in your phone. And so it's, it's, it's managing your location as you're moving around in a in the real world. It's managing the virtual space based off of the 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 feedback from your phone that you have in front of you. And so what you're able to do is go to a complex series of pipes, let's say, and look at it and put your phone up to it. And you can tag those pipes and say this one goes here and this one goes is over there and this one goes over there. And then the next person that comes in puts their phone up to those pipes and can do the exact same thing and see those tags and get the access to that information and they can download the manuals or they could see where it goes or add an additional note or see the um, see the the repair history on that, which is something that's also very important. And so the 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 applications to this are seemingly endless. And one of the other great pieces about it is that it's a bring your own device platform. And so you bring your own device, you plug into their cloud systems and get access to the network. And you don't have to go and look for drawings or ask for help or bring a thousand manuals with you. It's all right there on your phone. Really cool. So you could ultimately, anybody could be a great you know, repair person when it comes to classic cars or air conditioners or you name it, it, you know, once you have the app and you, somebody's already gone in and tagged something, you, you can just follow along. Yeah, right? absolutely. Absolutely. And so there, well, I think is, and I think what's fascinating about this is it changes the whole, there's this whole field of like knowledge management, mm-hmm. right? And it's, it's so um, oftentimes confined to either just <laughs> in people's heads and, you know, trying to, to find that knowledge or people are trying to create these sort of libraries and systems online, but this brings it out into the field. And so it becomes this real-time knowledge management resource system that that all kinds of people will be able to tap into and and take advantage of real time, and that's that's pretty yep. cool. I I thought his aha moment at the competition on stage was um, when he described to the room, you know, look up. There's I don't know, probably thirty or forty chandeliers in the room. You know, how would you go about if someone said you need to fix or replace that that chandelier? How would you know to go about doing that? And um, there was this aha, aha, aha moment of, you know, wow. So this app will lead me to knowing that's chandelier G and how that's going to work and et cetera. And it was just that you don't have to go to a manual and just exactly what you guys just said. But um, that's pretty incredible. Very efficient, much safer, and um, time like, just saves a lot of dollars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was pretty impressive. I think the crowd sort of really took it or understood um, that real situation that real world situation i guess is what i'm trying to say and um and i like to always go to the founder i'm sort of the character person of the founders and i have to say <laughs> joe is um again it's all of them I, I i don't have any favorites um but joe uh happened to share the story about packing up the car with the dogs and a bird and heading out from virginia to the uh, west coast because he was given an opportunity to see if uh, a, an accelerator program could maybe help get them to another level. And um, it was, he has a whole blog about our whole, yeah, his whole blog post about, which is pretty uh, fun to, to read through and just um, what it takes to be an entrepreneur who is not going to give up very easily and 
sometimes you have to put your wife and the birds and the dogs in the car and get it going. So <laughs> I love it. That's a, a few of us have been there. <laughs> We've all been there. It's a great story. I love that. And I'm glad that he shared it out there. I think it's on Medium. So if people want to check it out, yeah. uh, go look, look for that post. Yeah. Uh, we can link it up uh, when we get it out, get this out as well. Um, one other thing I want to add, though, is I don't know if you mentioned this or not, Rich, uh, but it's, you know, it's a right now a, a monthly subscription program. So um, it's not consumer facing as much as it is like working with companies to kind of get them on board on the enterprise level to, to leverage this, which could be really, um, you know, a good route to go with something like this. If you've got like all the carrier air conditioner, you know, repair people or whatever going after this, you know, it's a big network. Sure, so naturally. I think um, yeah, it's a really smart move. I think eventually though, it could be a great consumer facing play as well with things like Pokemon Go and, and others that just have sprouted and caught everyone's attention for uh, at least a New York minute. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a B2B guy. And so I, I, I love that he's, that he went, that they're going direct to the big corporations and the enterprise and he sees the enterprise applications, but that's, that's just my bias is, is B2B. B2C scares me because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> The consumers don't actually scare you. It's the it's the how to. It's the how to, it. okay. right? Exactly. And helping on the military side too, which is super cool. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely. A lot of things Definitely agree. Sure. Okay. So lots of good things going with Ario. We're obviously going to be interested to continue to watch them evolve. All right. So those are our five startups. Uh, we'll have lots more here uh, on our next episode. But in the meantime, I wanted to just get everyone to kind of weigh in. Um, what's what's next for startup year and established and um, and then kind of, uh, you know, we can, get this is, I think, our last episode, or first episode, but also our last episode before 2019. So we can we can share some thoughts around that, too. So as I mentioned earlier, applications are open for 2019 start of the year. Um, our first big event is going to be on March 10th in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest. We are... Um, you can usually find us at Maggie Mays, um, one of the best places on um, at South by, and we'll showcase 25 or so startups and host um, a huge startup night celebration where um, all the startups will get a chance to showcase, but also have um, fast pitches and some top five pitching um, to some investors and influencers and tech leaders. So some new things, some new things are coming up as we continue to improve the program, and um, just super excited about a lot of new opportunities happening this year or this coming er, next year. Sorry. So it's already ahead of me. <laughs> it's almost 2019. Yeah, 2019. Here we come. I'm already like quickly trying to race there, but um, yeah. So super excited and hope to see folks at CES and South by. So. And one of the things that we started before 2019 that we started in 2018 here was the daily deal flow. And the motto is that a startup a day keeps the FOMO away. Woo! And so every day, so we feature one vetted startup a day every workday. These are startups that are applying for startup of the year. They're startups from our network. From our network, and so uh, you know we'd love to have you submit your startup if you're a startup, or and come and subscribe and enjoy and see what the startups are that are that are out there. And so these are all pre Series A companies. These are our startup of the year companies, right? So they're less than six years old, less than five million in funding, but they do have to have a working prototype or, MV or MVP. So go to startupofyear.com and check out Daily Deal Flow. And I, and I just want to add, I mean, we don't just tell you the startup name. I mean, we give a very good snapshot with that Daily Deal Flow. So it's a really, really cool format and template and I encourage everyone to go check it out. Cool. And in addition to our own programs like Start of the Year and the Daily Deal Flow, uh, we actually work with a lot of outside organizations and, and help them with their own innovation programs. So we've done a lot at CES in the past and worked with CTA. Uh, this year, we're working with uh, the CTA Foundation and AARP and producing a, an actual pitch competition at CES 2019. So if you are coming to CES, come check it out. We're going to be in Eureka Park. Uh, on Thursday, the Thursday of, of CES week, and um, and we'll be producing a really cool AARP sponsored pitch competition. Um, in addition to that, we're working with uh, one of our favorite clients, NASA. We've worked with the NASA iTech program for a couple of years now, and we're also going to be at CES um, producing a an Ignite the Night event. So Ignite the Night actually looks for companies who are who are doing really interesting things, solving problems here on Earth, 
but they have potential to solve critical issues for NASA and their missions to space. So if you're curious about that, check for the event, which is an official event at CES 2019. Um, and we're working with all kinds of organizations. Uh, one additional group that we've just started working with is AFWERKS. They are uh, a, a group that's spun out of the United States Air Force doing something very similar where they're trying to um, solve problems in a much faster, efficient, more cost-effective way to save taxpayers money. So they're looking at critical problems, finding innovators out there and working with them to come up with solutions. So we've, uh, we've had the privilege to work with AFWERKS um, on Challenger 2 and, and are excited about their future. And then we work with lots of other groups. You know, Lori mentioned some of the, um, you know, the, the startup hubs around the country. We're currently working with an amazing group out of Tampa Bay, the, the whole Tampa Bay region called Embark Collective, where uh, right in Tampa Bay, they're building this amazing uh, startup hub that's going to go sort of beyond the traditional co-working and, you know, traditional resources you would find at some of these hubs and really go the extra mile to coach and provide resources to to really motivated founders and help them succeed in a bigger way. So these are the types of things that we work on beyond the start of the year program. And we get super excited to help companies, organizations, whatever they might be, to really put, reach the potential of the programs that they're creating. Well, you all left me speechless. Uh, that's, that's what we've been up to. Uh, no, we that that's a great overview of everything we've been up to and, and more. And, you know, the only thing I think of that we, you know, wasn't touched on was the um, the investment community that we we have. Um, we started a couple of years ago and we invested in some of the companies from startup of the year. Uh, we're continuing that and obviously looking forward to closing our, our latest um, fund or round uh, to invest in some of the top companies from this past uh go around. So excited about that. Um, excited to get involved with some of these companies. And obviously, they're all looking for funding currently. So if you like any of the companies that we, we talked about, um, and you're interested in getting involved in them, let us know, um, whether it be through us or through uh, directly, uh, we we'd love to make make that happen. So um, you can reach out to us uh, via established or start of the year. And you mentioned, all right. you mentioned Asuka, but maybe a shout out to ShareShare. Just as, oh uh, yeah, Shearshare. Share. Um, Shearshare is, is our 2015. Yeah, we we actually uh, are super excited about them, and we did get a chance to invest in them a couple years ago. And since then, they've gone on to get investment from. Uh, they, well, they win pretty much every competition they get into. It seems like, but they so they won like Google's uh, Google for Entrepreneurs Demo Day, uh, and then they oh. they they got the Rise of the Rest Fund invested in them. So they, and I think they just were on like um, they, they were at the Business Insider Conference this week or last week and got a chance to, to be on stage with um, some notable folks. So I think they're doing a great job and they're continuing to grow. So I'm obviously excited about uh, the, alumni for sure. The cup, the couple group, a uh, couple of team uh, from uh, McKinney, Texas, just outside of Dallas of sheer share. So check them out if you hadn't uh, had a chance yet, but they're obviously one of our great alumni uh, from the start of the year program. Uh, but it doesn't just end there. We're just getting started. As Lori mentioned earlier, the application is open. Uh, you can apply if you've got a startup that you think would fit. If you are listening, you don't have a startup, but you know people that do. Uh, there's lots of opportunities to get them involved in our programs, whether it be Daily Deal Flow or Startup of the Year or something along the lines of an event um, or some of these other groups that we work with. Thank you all very much for, for co-hosting this first episode of the Startup of the Year podcast. Uh, thank you all for listening as well. And uh, we'll be back soon with, uh, with lots more startups as we look across the world for the most interesting startups and try to showcase them in, a, in an interesting new format here on a podcast. So everyone, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year. What else? What are the? What am I missing? Festivus. Forgot that one. Darn it. Uh, yeah. Everyone have a great, great holiday season. Hug your loved ones. Drink lots of uh, marshmallow-filled hot chocolate and watch Marshmallow World. Thanks for listening to the Startup of the Year podcast. Be sure to subscribe and we'll be back with another episode soon.